So Steve, we're in phase two. This is the strength and power phase. And we're gonna do workout one of week one. Set power, set number two, lock, drive. Previous phase, phase one, hypertrophy phase, was more about kind of controlling the muscle and getting a little more fatigue. This one's more about lifting some bigger weights and also doing some more explosive exercises. Overall, we're still looking around, keeping things in an, in an hour. That said, if you need to take a little more breathing time to get good performance in each set, we're not gonna set necessarily put you on a time clock. All right, man, well, uh, you told me a little bit about it, I mean, let's get to work. Let's do it, brother, come on. <laughs> come on! <laughs> So Steve, we're gonna start off with our warm up. We got six exercises in this warm up. It's gonna take us about seven minutes. Obviously, when you first learn it, it's gonna it might take you a little more to get the movements okay. right. I'll coach you up through it. But once you get it down, these things all have a nice flow to them. Okay. So the first one I'm gonna have you do is called the arm crossover. So we're gonna have you lay on your side, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull your knees up all the way above your hips. So here's your hips, there's your knees. So it's like a cannonball, right? Okay. And then from here, kind of hold your hands like this. Perfect. So. Minimizing the movement here, you're gonna take this arm, take it all the way over, and you're gonna to try to touch this shoulder blade, yep, on the ground, and I like how your eyes are following your head, and then bring it back. So what we're doing here is we're focusing on trying to get the shoulder blade down. If you can't do it, that's all right. And just making sure that you're not forcing anything, all right? You're not pushing yourself into a range that you can't. How am I doing, six each side? Six each side, you got it. And I wanna show you, before you turn, I wanna show you a cool little modification. See, you're kind of, you're not quite touching there, that's okay. What you can do is you can take your fist, put it between your knees here, your right fist, mm -hmm. turn it this way. See what that does, it gives you a little more space. Okay. And now try it. And you see that allowed you to get a little deeper, Give right? a little more range of motion. Yeah, yeah, so as you get more flexible, then what will happen is you'll take that little spot out of there. All right, my brother, you got your six. Let's flip over. Whatever we do on the right, we gotta do on the left, right? So the big thing here, where a lot of people cheat, is they always wanna, they don't bring their knees up high enough. We Good. wanna try to take the low back out of it. Good, and I like how you're following just a normal pace on this. You're not holding it too long because you don't wanna, we're not doing a static stretch right now. We're trying to build you up. But we're really trying to open up that thoracic spine. That's the middle of your back. If we open that up, you get better shoulder range of motion when we do some upper body stuff. So from here, what I want you to do is flip back to the other side, stay on your side for me. And what you're gonna do is extend your bottom leg, your right leg straight out, and I want you to point this knee to the sky and grab your left ankle with your left hand. Like that? Yep, and grab your ankle with your left hand. You got it, just like that. Don't force anything. Good. All right, try to keep this leg as straight as you can. Perfect. And from here, everything here is going to stay pretty stable. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is keeping your foot flat like this, you're going to try to lift this leg, keeping it straight as high as you can without kicking it forward. Okay. All right? So come up and hold for a sec, and then back, back mm -hmm. down. So we'll go 10 reps on this one. Just one second hold and bring it back down. So one of the things that we try to do in these dynamic warm-ups is try to do some things, hit the body, hit the muscles in some different ways that we might not get from basic strength training. Good. So these are like low level strength training exercises. So go ahead and let's flip it over. We'll try the other side. So the important thing is just to stay really straight. And so do I want to stack my hips before doing this? You don't really it? have to. It's easier because you're already set up. Notice how the arm crossover sets you up for this one really well. Good, so get straight, yep. And the other thing here is you're pretty good, but I'm gonna adjust you a little bit. Move this foot a little more towards me okay. and roll a little bit more towards me so you're perpendicular to the okay. floor. You'll notice that that's a little bit tougher, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't wanna be kind of facing the ceiling. You wanna be perpendicular to the floor, 90 degrees. And what I really like how you're doing is you're keeping this foot flat or your toes pulled towards your nose, which is exactly the position that your foot would be in if you were standing up using these muscles, right? Okay. So that's important. We want a good transfer. All right, Steve, so as soon as you're done here, I'm gonna get you to spin over so you're on all fours, all right? Good, so now we're gonna kind of adjust this position. I want you to go really wide with your knees, so nice and wide outside your hands, good, and sit your butt back far, just like that. And I like how your arms are out in front of you like that. So from here, what you're gonna do, you remember the old, uh, what's the old sprinkler dance? Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you know that one. So I want you to put your hand behind your head with the left hand. You mean remember that one, I still do that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So go left hand behind the, the head for me, behind the neck. Okay. You got it. So from here, take this elbow and now try to take it to the sky. So try to point it to the sky and straighten this arm out as you do it, but don't force it. Okay. And now bring it down and just kind of like thread the needle here. Good, not oh. too far. That's the easy part. And now go back up. Good, so think about this like you're doing a bow and arrow. Just look at me for a second. Think about it like this. So as this goes up, you're pushing into the ground. Okay. You got it. 
All right, so give me six per side. Don't force anything, pause for a second at the top. And one of the reasons we have your hips back like this is because you notice how as you go up and reach to the ceiling, your hips want to shift to the left. Mm -hmm. That's because your lower back is trying to take up for what your thoracic spine, which is what we're trying to mobilize here, doesn't have. So by keeping your hips far back, it minimizes cheating. So it gives us what we want to get, where we want to get it. One of the things that's important for anybody from a bodybuilder, strength and power athlete, or just a general exercise enthusiast to do these kind of things is because, again, we want to get some benefits that we're not getting from strength train, getting some end ranges of movement. I mean, how many exercises are we doing, hold this for a second, that are forcing you to feel that, right, yeah. at end range. Right. So this helps you get, maximize the range of motion that you're utilizing in your exercise. And you know, the greater range of motion we can do through strength training, the more benefit right. we're gonna get. So we're gonna do this exercise I came up with called the super dog. So let me just kind of quick demo this one real quick. You're here, you're gonna take one leg straight back and then sit all the way back. This toe's curled up underneath. A lot of people ask flat or curled mm -hmm. up, keep it curled up. And sit all the way back like this and then you're on your elbows. So this okay. rib is against this thigh and then okay. I'll coach you up from there. Right. And obviously, you know, you're not always gonna have turf like this, right? So, and then go to your elbows. So you would have a, if you're at a, like an aerobic room or something, you would use a, a mat so that you're obviously you okay. know, not tough on your knees. Okay, so what happens here is because we take the low back by this keeping this left knee in the position it's in, we take the lumbar spine out of it. So now when I ask you to lift your leg up, you have to use your glute and your hamstring to do it. And a lot of people can't even do it. It's tough, mm -hmm. all right? So give me a couple reps just to make sure you can get it. Nice, don't jolt any more forward than you are. Now, and we can see how much that glute's turning on. Now, I'm gonna add another element to it. I want you to extend your left arm straight out and lift your thumb up, turn your, point your thumb to the sky, up and down, both at the same time, all right? We'll go 12 reps of these. One second up, one second down. You're doing a great job. The cheat here would be shifting forward and raising your butt into the air. You're doing a great job of not doing that. This is a lot harder than it looks. So like we said, this isn't just easy stuff, just to oh, warm up. I can bypass it. Man, you're hitting muscles in these end ranges of movement that really start to build more control and a little bit of strength, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. And that's another reason why I like these warm ups. We do a lot of things that are on the left side and on the right side. So we can kind of see which side are you more dominant on and we can address that in the strength training. Nice. So when I'm doing something like this, you know, obviously people that are doing this workout at home or, or in their gym, how are they know, how will they know if they're executing this warm up or this technique in, with, with proper form? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you asked it. And actually you asked it after a, a perfect exercise because the nice thing about that exercise, why I designed it the way I did and called it the super dogs, it's a combination of what's called the bird dog, which is this one, right? right? And this one. So I designed that exercise to make it so you can't do it wrong. Mm -hmm by putting you in that position, by sitting back to so, it. Totally taking the lumbar Yeah, so out. either you do it right or you don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Other exercises, you're gonna have to maybe get in front of a mirror, like the one I'm getting ready to show you, which is the shoulder L's. Okay. So let's do that one. And that one is gonna be a little bit tougher. So let's have you facing this way, and I want you to give me your best Romanian deadlift type position. All right, and I wanna see more of a parallel torso in your hips, so more like that. Okay. Perfect, so then from here, I want you to give me like a wide grip row. Excellent, so here's what I'm looking for. Now this is the one that's a little bit tougher. I want 90-90, I want 90 at your shoulder, so if I'm looking at a bird's eye view, it looks like a T, mm -hmm. and I want 90 at your elbow. Now you're gonna hold this position, pretend there's an axle running through here, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna externally rotate, which means lift your arms up like this, watch me. Here, you're gonna go up, and you're gonna go down. You got it, up and down. So the common thing that people do here wrong, and it's very hard to get the feel for it, that's why you need a mirror, is they let their elbows drop down towards their hips. So they go like this. They go like that, right? And again, just like we did with the, these different letters that we do, we're building endurance through here, because if you can't do this position, you can't do deadlifts well. Right. So we're starting to program in and prep your body to get in that position and move the bigger loads that we're gonna do. So now what we wanna do is work on some agility type work. So here's what I want you to do. Remember what I said about you want to minimize ground contact time, yep. right? So we're going to really focus on that plyometric. It's called the stretch reflex. So as soon as your foot hits the ground, I don't want you just to go like this and just think, oh, this is a useless warm up. I want you to use this as an opportunity to work on that stiffness at your ankle so you can transfer force. So really quickly, minimize time on the ground, all right? And we're going to go 15 per leg, so 30 total. How important is your arm placement? 
with this. You know, it goes together. When you walk, or if you tried to run and put your hands on your hips, right, it'd be really awkward. So your arms work with your opposite hip, as you see here. All right, good, take a puff. So you take about 15, 20 seconds and we'll go again. So one thing that's important there is the difference between power training and plyometric training. Power training is just explosion, plyometric is working on that springiness. So one of the things that I kind of noticed with you there is you started to make it too, too you're kind of over Muscling it up. Let the springiness from the ground do it for you. Okay. All right, so try it again. Be a little more relaxed with it. Just give me five each side. Now, ah, better. Better. See, you were just expending energy you didn't need to expend, and that's important when you're on the field. Done. So two things. Number one, we're getting ready to do full body workouts now. Second thing is, the last exercise we finished on, that springing exercise, mm -hmm. is gonna lead us into the first exercises that we're gonna get to, which demand more springiness and more explosion. All right, now that you warmed me up, what's our workout? So we're gonna pair up a broad jump, or some people call it a long jump, three reps per set, four sets. And we're also gonna go over to the medicine ball and we're gonna do this rotational throw exercise which we call punch throws. So what I want you to do on your first jump, this is not technically our first set, this is like a build up set. Okay. All right, I want you to give me like a 60% jump. Okay. All right. Perfect. So now give me about 70, 75%. Okay. And that will go about 90%. Awesome. So same thing with the medicine ball. We're just gonna kind of groove the okay. pattern a little bit. So let's get you facing me first. So what's my grip on the ball? Almost, I tell people, almost like you're gonna smash the ball, right? Okay. The reason why we do that is we want that back elbow. Obviously okay. that's gonna be your left arm because the wall's here, right? And if you don't have a wall, you can do this in a parking lot. Buy a medicine ball, throw it as long as you can, about 45 degrees instead of straight. Okay. Walk to the ball, turn around, throw it back. Foot placement, am I shoulder width? Am I a little Foot bit wider? Foot placement is, is about an athletic stance, you know, so I would say about somewhere between shoulder width apart, right? But it's okay. everybody's a little different. I don't want you to get that low, just lightly, okay. okay? Soft knee. Now, the big thing I wanna see is this arm, your back arm, goes straight through and watch the back foot. Boom, follows through, all right? Got it. So just be light with it, whether you catch it or not, I'm cool with it. Just okay. for right now, give me three reps each side. Good, let's go one more on that side. Beautiful. And let's turn around and try the other side, my man. Nice work. Now what you can do on that as we get into it, if you feel like you get a little more power, and you probably will, is you don't have to just stand in the middle. You can shift a little bit, like a baseball player, okay. bang, and then go through. Is this something I'm doing continuous one, two, three, or is I, am I taking my time kind of like a one rep max type good, of thing? Good question. It's, five single reps back to back. So okay. it's like five singles. All right, so gotcha. let's get you back on your long jump. These are your working sets now, brother. Nice. That wasn't ninja feet. That's all right, I think it was pretty good. That was like, a, that was lineman feet. <laughs> I can't relate to these NFL jokes, man. <laughs> lineman feet. Is that like jazz hands? Those are really heavy feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the linemen are 17. All right, 100% here. Nice. And one thing I love about what you did, you use the arms, and so right. powerful, I could hear the wind right by me. That's what right. I want. Good. Same thing here. So we go five each side. These you can go as hard as you can because you're not getting a lot of impact here, okay. like landing. Nice, reset, power, reset, power. One more, other side, beautiful. Follow through with it, turn. One more, nice. Right. So as soon as you get your heart rate down a little bit more, we're gonna go right back into it. Set two, again, 90%, 95%, 100%. Nice work. Nice. All right, give me five, hard as you can on these. Nice. Use your back leg to push off. It's not just upper body. Turn your hip, turn your hip. Load, explode. Nice. Rest at least 90 seconds on these. But this is all about effort right now. This is set number three. Nice. And now 95 and then 100. Beautiful. Break the ball on the wall. Turn your hip. There it is. Five reps. Beautiful. Getting better as you go. Four set, last set. A 
There's art right there. Five per side. So we got two exercises. We first got this hybrid barbell deadlift. We got four sets of each. We're gonna do four sets of four to six reps. Obviously, we're gonna do a few build-up sets for that one. You certainly don't wanna go right into that with a heavy weight. And then we're gonna pair set that with a clapping push-up. And the reason why I just call it a paired set is super set a lot of times means like you're gonna go back to back with no rest. With this, if you need to take a little break in between it, that's okay, but I don't, I'm not really encouraging you to sit there and walk around for two minutes in between exercises. Good. Exercises like the broad jumps and the deadlifts that have a, a risk component to them, right? right? You gotta warm up to them. Yeah. Obviously, we're staying in that four to six zone, so we don't need as many build-up sets as somebody for who's sure. doing like one RMs or two RMs. I want you to focus on, which is the focus of this program anyway, when you're doing sets like this, try to rip the weight off the ground. So don't right. just pick it up like this. Boom, rip it up as fast so as you can. the speed of the movement. You got it. And you're gonna get the same type of motor unit recruitment that you would get because you're trying to drive the weight faster. How much time am I taking in between these paired sets? It's that happy medium between as much as you need, as little as you have to, but it's as little as you have to in order to get the performance that you know you need to get on this. So quality of the reps is more important than how much rest you're taking. Exactly right. Why do we call this a hybrid deadlift? Real quick. Well, it's, a high, it's basically in between a sumo deadlift, which is real wide with the feet turned out, mm -hmm. and an RDL with your feet pretty much hip width apart. Okay. Right? When your feet are hip width apart, it's primarily a hip hinge, like a bow, mm -hmm. and when your feet are wide like the sumo, it's, it's very squatty, right? You, mm -hmm. you lower your hips. This is dead in the middle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your feet just outside shoulder width, Toes can be pointed out slightly. Obviously, you know you want to get really close to the bar. Mm -hmm. Let your hands just drop shoulder width. Don't bring them in too close. Don't bring them out wide. Just let them drop right here. Okay. And then you're going to do a half and half. You're going to bend your knees and hip hinge. So it's slightly less than an RDL, slightly less than a squat. Mm -hmm. It's dead in between. You see that? Hence and the name hybrid. Hybrid. And that's more of an athletic stance that we see. Okay. And then from there... Take the tension out of the bar like powerlifters talk about, which is that click, right? Mm -hmm. Take the tension out of the bar and then just stand right up and then reverse the movement, ease it down. Now, Good about right so, here? Yeah, just outside your shoulders. Okay. Now arms and just And when I'm lay. gripping, am I, am I like this? Um, that's a mixed grip, grip, sumo grip. We don't need to do that right now because okay. we're not going heavy enough. All right? How am I right here? Yeah, the, a little too squatty for I want you right now. So a little so, more right here? Yeah, right there is good. Okay, tension out of the bar and just come straight up. Ease it down. So let's go eight reps for a warm up. Drop just a little bit. There it is. Good. You can spread your hands a little wider. Good. You want to be shoulder width apart. So a half squat, half deadlift. So one more, and then let's put two and a quarter on there. Oh, you love, you love that. Yeah. That's your favorite part of the deadlift. So let's roll it up on the on the rubber plates here. We'll get to the push-ups in a bit. Don't hurt yourself with that. Let me get you to do another warm-up set. Six reps here, we got 225 on there. Get close to the bar. Now to bring the bar close to you, set. Back straight, good. Don't forget to take the tension out of the bar. There you go. Yeah, kind of pull in your lats a little bit before you lift it. Good, down easy, give me a little more squat. There it is. Remember, it's that hybrid. It's not just a pure RDL. We're doing four sets. This is your first working set. Six single reps, take tension out of the bar each rep and rip it off the ground. Ease it down, reset, rip, good. Make sure you lock it in a little bit better before you lift. There it is. There you go. Now we're talking. Beautiful. Well, I'll set up the weight here and get you to do the explosive clap push yep. up. All right? All right. Three to six reps. You can start at the six. So and I'm as you just fatigue, pushing up, clapping in the middle? Clap and try to land as lightly as you can, just like we did with the, the long jump. Okay. Absorb into the landing, power off again. Power, ease it down, good. Nice. Come up faster, come up faster. Fast as you can on the way up. There it is, <clears throat> done. Yeah, I wanna work on that absorption. Use the range of motion. Good. But don't but spend as minimal time down there as possible. I was concentrating more on catching myself I, off. I got you. I got, you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Set number two. Lock, drive. Give me better back position. Good. Tense this a little bit better before you stand. There it is. Good. 
same thing. Beautiful. That was it. So this parrot set starts to bring a little bit of conditioning into the mix. There it is. Good. Down. Lock the butt. Lock. Go. Rip that weight. Rip it. Set. Rip. Good. Drop your hips a little bit. Drop your hips. Set. Rip. That one was ugly. Fatiguing, coach. Yeah, I was going to say. So you're going to, that tells us what? You need to rest a little longer. Yeah. Before you get to your fourth set. So you don't have to do six here. Maybe you do five. Maybe you do three. Done. Nice. How many have you been doing every set? Six. Do you have to do that every set? No. no. As long as I'm hitting four. There you go. I'd rather get right. four good, clean ones. So we're gonna play this the safe card. You're gonna your goal on this one is four good ones. Four and ones. if you feel good, then you can add right. one or two more. All right? Mm. Drop your butt a little bit. Lock it in. Tension go. <clears throat> there it is. One down. <clears throat> That's it. Yeah. You felt it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, and as you do it more, you get that feeling. You can tell those little changes in your body. <sighs> All right. Done. Done. <clears throat> you got it, brother. Four mm -hmm. sets down. So Steve, we're gonna move on to our next series of exercises. So we're gonna do four sets of three to five reps with the lat pull down. And then we're gonna do three sets of six to eight reps per leg on either the single leg knee tap squat or the Bulgarian split squat. All right. All right? Let's start with the lat pull down. In regards to grip width, mm -hmm. just about shoulder width, wherever it feels, feels comfortable for you. All right? Now this is not an exercise I've found that people need a lot of warm up into. You mm -hmm. know, I've, I've not found people get injured if you could just go right to a, so not a, lot of build to a heavy it. set. Now you can go right so in, you can go right into this one. Our range is three to five reps. Three to five reps. So I'll so say the high gonna end is, go heavy then, you're huh? going you're gonna, gonna to go heavy for sure. And you're definitely going to get those knees underneath the pad. First we're going to set, drive it in, control it back. Explode it in, <clears throat> drive it back. You can lean on it a little bit as you do it. There you go. You need at least three. See if we can get five. Ooh, we got one more. Drive. Nice. That's it. And I like what you did there. You didn't, you could have maybe squeezed out one or two more, but we're not right. trying to take this to failure like we did with the okay. hypertrophy phase. All right? right. It's mostly that, that performance. Okay. So check this out. Right now I'm just using a rubber plate with a pad on top. Okay. You stand in front of the plate. You basically take one foot, put it behind your body like this, put your arms out like a zombie, uh -huh. keeping your front foot flat, your weight bearing foot flat. You're going to sit back on your hips, just like you do a regular squat. You're going to try to tap your knee on the pad and come back so up. So it's kind of a variation of a pistol squat kind it, of, right? It is. Pistol squat is here, right. knee tap is here. I like knee tap better because look at the athletic stance I'm in. Pistol yeah. squat is more kind of that rounded back. Yeah. It's not as athletic looking. Right. Okay. Never done this one before. All right. We like that. New experiences, right? New yeah. experiences, right new here. results. Arms out. Yeah. It normally takes a few reps to get warmed up to. So we're going to use this as kind of a, just a learning set, but it's still a working set for you. Good. Try to touch your knee, not touch your toe. Yep. So just your left knee touches, not your toe. Six to eight reps. Nice. That's why we're doing more reps here than we do in the lap pull down. Beautiful. Now we're on it. A couple more. Yep. Reach those hands forward. You can lean a little more forward with it. Get a counterbalance. Just what I said. It took you about three to kind of get the groove. All right. You got another leg, brother, to hit. Now, not everybody's going to go as deep as you. Uh huh. And some people, and you may even next set, may even be able to go a little bit deeper. We'll test that in a bit. Anytime you need to put your, your non-weight bearing foot down, that's cool. I like it. See, you look like you're getting ready to take off in that position. All right, brother, working set two. Let's hit it. Get in there. Power it in, Steve. Ease it out. I want to see you explode it in. More range, let it stretch. One more is going to do it. Get it. Maybe try one more. Let me try one more. Come on, power it. There you go, ease it back. Nice work. Now look, on that last rep on those lat pull downs, don't pull the deadlift drop thing. Okay. Control it for me. Right. All right? Well, you threw me curveball with the six rep. I there. know, I know. <laughs> All right, I want to see at least six, no more than eight here. Control, lightly tap, come up. You nailed it. 
It's okay to lean a little bit forward. That creates a counterbalance. You don't have a big load on your back, so you can do that. And I think we've got the right height for you, which is the height that you can just barely tap in control and come out of. This is your third working set. You're going to do both, lat and knee tap. Remember, power it in as fast as you can. Rip it to you. Rip it to you. Ease it down. There you go. Rip it. Control. Rip it. Control. One more is going to do it. Rip it. Control. That's it. Nice. So you see we're going, I'm looking at that speed. As soon as I saw that bar speed slow down, that was it. Six to eight here, brother. Good, that's your bottom limit, that's your six. Nice adjustment. Two more, we get our six. Good work. So look, while you're taking a little puff real quick, when you get to this, if you, let's say you couldn't do that, right? right? Foot goes on the pad. Now I got that balance. You can hold your dumbbells, drop down, come up. So you right. see, look, here's this position. If we take the balance away, right. you get that, right? So it's the same body position just for folks who don't have as good of control as you do. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's a lot. So you're done here. You got three rounds of your six to eight. This is your fourth working set here. Three to five, just give me what you can give me. Minimum of three. Rip it. Five is the max. Nice. So Steve, we're on the last series of exercises in this workout. Two sets of 15 on the hamstring, two sets of 12 to 15 side plank with external rotation, mm -hmm. and two sets of 15 each letter, 15 A's and 15 Y's. So I'm gonna let you just take off, brother. Full range of motion, good control. Nice. And you're just following mm -hmm. a normal pace there, I like that. Just normal in, control on the way out. I like how you're bringing it all the way into your rear end, man. Full range. Perfect. That's the right amount of weight for you. You don't need to take yeah. it to ultimate failure. Okay. So let's get you in a side elbow plank facing that way with your elbow on the pad. So I want your feet stacked. Elbow should be directly under your shoulder. Now here's how I want you to picture this because a lot of people do this wrong. I see a okay. lot of bend here. Picture that you're gonna put your head, your butt, and your heels against the wall that's behind you. Okay. Ah, see how you just straightened out? Right. Now, give me this arm, make it like a 90 degree angle bicep curl. Okay. Perfect, let me give you a weight plate. Just hold, see how I'm holding the weight plate like that? Mm -hmm. Perfect, now from here, keeping your elbow to your side, just give me external rotation. Elbow to the side, good. 12 to 15 reps, okay? See, the nice thing about this is you get rotator cuff, but the whole time this is adding some stability, right? The, yeah. the weight's trying to pull you forward. Hips up. Hips up, keep that elbow into your body, 12 to 15. That's it, that's it. You're done on that one, brother. That might be a little too many for you. Let's try to face it the other way. Set your position first. There it is, yep, hips up, nice. Now hit it. Good, keep the elbow tight to your body. Yeah, so we don't want that arm to peel off your body like that, we just wanna keep it there. I like how you're owning this position right here. Straight line the whole time. Good, now hold on to that weight plate for me. That's tougher than it looks, isn't it? Not for sure. <laughs> so now, let's get you going in this direction here. First one, you're gonna do Y, so you're gonna start here. Thumbs up, holding the weight plates. Okay. You're gonna go like this, come down. So yes, you're getting some front delt, but you're also getting lower trap as yeah. well, all right? Yeah. So we go 15, out like this, then you're gonna do A is the exact opposite, you're here. Now when you do it- 15 of each? Yeah, well I'd like to get 15 if you can get it. Not here, out here. Okay. All right? I'll let you get to it, and we'll coach up as needed. Beautiful. Okay, let's get the butt up a little higher so your torso is a little more parallel. There, now we got it. 
Good. Don't swing any more than you're swinging. Good. And if you can't get 15, that's fine. We'll get 12. And before you get the A's, stand up for a second just to take a five, 10 second break on your low back muscles. Good. So same thing just on the back end. You're here. Okay. Look at the shoulder joint. The shoulder doesn't move forward as the hands go back. Okay. The shoulders go back as the hands go back. Nice, yep, and really give me a good pinch at the shoulder blades only at the top and let them out. Now nah, we got it, perfect. Good, a little bit closer to your hips and you're good. Just a bit, just a bit. Now nah, we got it. Good, and I like how you're controlling it. You're not swinging, no body English. Getting some of those postural muscles, also some of those shoulder muscles. If you need to get water, grab water, right? But as soon as you're ready, I want you to try to give yourself a little bit of incomplete rest here, Correct. all right? As long as you can still get the, the reps that you need. Good. 15. This is where we still keep our bodybuilding in there. Love it. Killing me. Good, set it up first. Hips a little bit more, good. Nice, so 12 to 15 here. And I like the right elbows directly under your right shoulder. Come on, give me this. There it is, there it is. It's always the non-sexy exercises that are the toughest. Oh. Set your body up first, long and tall. There it is. All right, some rotator work. Good, maintain this position. I don't want to see anything change as you do this. Come on, man, we're almost done. Let me get to the fun part. All right, I need my 15. Now you keep counting while I'm talking. If you start to get too tired, drop the plates and finish with just the weight of your arms, all right? Raise your butt, lower your torso. Come on. Yeah. Give it about 10, 15 seconds. New meaning to feel the burn, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good though. Yeah, not just an aerobic class, feel the burn. Nice. Good. Squeeze, let it out. Big chest at the top and let it out. Nice. Right, now we got it. Now we got it. And you're building some endurance off that same deadlift position. Yeah, baby. Oh! Okay, brother, so we got through our strength training, so the next phase is we're gonna take those animal patterns that we did in the first phase, the hypertrophy phase, and we're gonna make them just a little bit tougher. We're gonna add a little backwards. Jeez, great. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna add a little backwards movement as well. All right. Today. All right, you ready for it? I'm ready for it. All right, it. so look, I need at least like three, four minutes breather, fully kind of chill out now and cover. Now language. I'm talking your language. Sorry, Steve, we're in the final, we're done the home stretch of this workout, brother. So we're gonna bring those animal crawls back that we did in the first phase, but we're gonna add just one new twist on it. Okay. They're gonna run everything the same. You crawl up about 10 yards, skip 10 yards, and then skip 20 yards back. Okay. You're gonna do the first one, just like we did it in the first phase, forward crawl, skip up, skip back. The second time you do it, you're gonna turn around face that way, and you can do a backwards crawl. So instead of kind of pulling yourself through, pushing. you're pushing yourself. So you're gonna okay. get a little more shoulder work. Okay. All right? So first we'll do the tiger. You got the tiger? You got it. Remember the knees on the inside of the elbows here. Back stays straight. There it is. Yes, good. Nice and tight. You get to that halfway point. So 10 yards roughly. We kind of paced it out earlier. That's about right there. Up, good skip. Now remember what we talked about. Be easy on the skips. Don't try to be really hard on it. Just same thing we talked about in the warm up. A few more steps. It's a whole new ball game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay, brother. You're good. Fire. Now, backward skip, a few steps. I'll tell you when to stop. That's good. And then come forward. Just be easy on it. Let the ground do a lot of the work for you on this one. Long reach. Mm. Nice, brother. That's perfect. Big reach, big reach. Cover as much ground as possible. Up you go. Skip. Now, I like how you're controlling your breathing. That's what we want. This is your opportunity to catch your breath because the abs are tight when you do it here. Now, this is a big one. This is a big push into the ground here. I don't know why, but I feel it's so goofy when I do this. That's why we do this, yep. Pick up your right, pick up your left. Right foot and left foot. Good, think about which foot to pick up. It's always the foot that's 
on the bent knee. Now you got it. <coughs> there you go, it's awkward, but that's why it works. You're good. Back and skip. Yep, be easy on it. Stop. Come back. Now you're gonna be at home, spiders. And this is just the same as we did it in the previous phase. Good, hands and feet together. Hands and feet together, hands and feet together. Good. Now get out of your way when you skip. Now you're right in the groove, brother. There's your skip. Good work. Got to be able to control your body when you're tired. That never happens in sports, right? Get that butt down. All right, rest is easy. Now you're going to be coming across the finish line. You got to give me this one. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Phase two, week one, workout one. Done. It's in the books.